So, did you watch the last episode all the way to the very end? If you did, you'll know that we are doing some building today on Hermitcraft. So, I've been out and about gathering up some of the materials that we need for our white block palette, and yes, there's something wrong with the bone block texture on my shulker box. There is one other material that we need though, and we're surrounded by a lot of it. Yes, snow blocks. Over here at Tango's base, he has been constructing a custom landscape around his magnificent build entirely of snow. And I was recently helping out with this, and I offered to make a snow farm for Tango and the other hermits that have been working on this project. It's down in the ground somewhere around here. Ah, yes, I think that's the spot. I was looking for some shulker boxes. So, a very inconspicuous entrance, but now a glorious contraption for harvesting snow. A bit of an overkill contraption, one might say. So, this contraption produces snowballs faster than a bunch of hoppers can pick up and transfer. So, we've got a minecart system here to unload and dump the items on top of these hoppers to fill up the chests. You would have seen this at our Guardian Skulk Farm in the last episode. I've used this design quite a few times this season. You can turn it on by flicking this lever, which will also activate this dispenser. The idea is that you'll put some bottles of experience in here to automatically repair your mending pick. And then what's that right there? It's a snow golem carefully positioned so it's over two blocks. What we have to do is aim just here so that when we break this one, we break the one behind it. Let's go ahead and run this thing. So now there's going to be a minecart down below. And one of the things that I love about the free cam is I can continue to hold down click while I fly around and see what else is going on here. So we have a detector rail here and some redstone to activate that dispenser on a regular basis. So we continuously repair our pick. And then you can see all the items are getting dumped out the back here. There does appear to be a problem. I need to change that trapdoor. This is such a great method though, because just so many snowballs get produced really quickly and that hopper minecart can pick all of them up. Anyways, I'm done now. The reason that there was a trapdoor at the back here was because you might want a second player to be crafting at the same time, so they could jump down into this spot and then just sit here and craft all of the snowballs. And then they would want a way out, so the trapdoor makes that nice and easy, but yeah, that's got to change. Or just leave it open like this, then the items can't catch on it and the player can do some crafting. So I only used this for a few minutes and look how much snow blocks we've crafted up here, this is great. But as you can imagine, I probably don't want to travel all the way out here every time I want to get some snow, so I'm probably going to go ahead and build that contraption again in my base at some point. But now, my friends, it's time to get to the building of this around our ice farm. We have to transform this stone into something more interesting. And we're going to do that using a gradients and brushes and masks and all of these fanciful world edit tools. So first of all, our mask is going to be stone blocks because we've already got those in place. And then we're going to apply our brush to the item that I'm holding, which is the glow arrow. We're going to make this a sphere and give it a radius of five blocks. Oh yeah, so we also need to tell it what materials that we want to use with the sphere. So now when I stand at a distance and right click with our arrow, we can paint stone blocks in the world to a different material. So once we've placed our gradient of wall blocks, we will then be replacing purple, for example, with these blocks here. This could be subject to change though. The idea is that our rougher textures will appear closer to the ground and our smoother ones will appear higher up. And as you would have seen with our initial brush, I nestled a little bit of the blue along in with the purple. And this is just to keep things nice and random. So look at that, a colourful gradient of madness, and does your spot, sometimes we go a little higher with certain colours, sometimes we go a little lower, and all of this will just subtly give this build some character when we replace these blocks out with those counterparts. Now when it comes to the stairs and the slabs, our selection is going to be a little bit more limited, so I'm going to go around manually and figure out which blocks we put in these spots. And along the front here, I wasn't sure what to do with these panels, but I've had an idea and do you know what? I think that's going to work. Just turning these into big glass windows. I think that's the way to go. Oh, and a little bit of light grey in there too to shake things up will help. I mean, I like it, but it looks a bit wild with the yellow ball next to it. So I've revised our palette somewhat. I felt like that we needed something darker towards the bottom. So I've gone and added in some black wall. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and replace all of these one by one with the materials you see above the blocks here. So first of all, the black wall gets swapped over, followed by the purple wall, then blue wall, then the cyan, and some blocks fall down, yep. Then we have the lime blocks, and last of all, the yellow blocks. 
Now some of the blocks at this level fell down because we're using some concrete powder in here now so I'll have to go in and manually replace some of those. And I'm also going to be coming in here manually and changing a few blocks out here and there just trying to get some nicer transitions with this gradient. Wow, a couple of hours has just absolutely flown by. I've been placing blocks like a madman. And I think this side of the build looks a lot better personally, but both sides are pretty cool. But there is more that we need to do. I want to introduce something that I'm calling stains. That's what these look like to me. They sort of tell a story of some of the materials degradating over time. Now there are three materials that I think could potentially fit into our palette as stains. One of them will be the birch logs. That's going to be a real easy mix into this palette. The other one is clay which adds quite a strong blue tint. And then we have white terracotta which might be a bit much. I know we can mix this one in but I'm not sure about these two. And another thing that B-dubs does masterfully here is use wall blocks instead of flat blocks just to break up the shape a little bit. If we had to do the same, when it comes to walls, we are a little bit more limited in scope. This is the only white one. We're definitely going to create some patches of walls in our pillars over here. And then down the bottom, I could potentially use andesite and cobblestone with some of those darker textures. So this didn't work out, but I did throw in a little bit of mushroom stem and also some sand. I'm not going to go over every single spot that I put them in, but if we just look across here, it does add a nice little bit of detail here and there. And the whole thing is really looking fantastic. So the next step is resource gathering. And I think we're at a point in the season when it comes to getting quartz where we need a farm for that instead of going through the nether and mining lots of blocks. And in order to get quartz from a farm, you need lots of gold, right? Because we've got a barter with piglins. So I have spent the last two days working on a two-in-one combo farm designed from scratch using some principles that you might recognize from other farms you've probably seen on Hermitcraft. And with this, we're going to get our hands on some gold. I don't have a lot of it. This is like the most of my stash. And I kind of want to hold on to these ores and perhaps sell them to other hermits who might want to use them for building. And over here, I really don't have a lot of quartz. Definitely not enough to do the build we've got to do. So I've been out there gathering the various materials that we need to construct this build. And I've also been gathering these materials, which we're going to use to create the combo farm of bartering and gold. But I am not done just yet. There are more materials I need before we can get started here. So I grabbed my shovel and headed out to the desert to scoop up some sand, we needed 42 stacks of this stuff to throw into our smelter and create a whole bunch of orange stained glass. Second was a trip into the nether because I needed to fill up a shulker box with magma blocks. I could effectively get some blaze rods from another hermit and craft these blocks using slime, but I decided I wanted a little bit of a grind in the nether and just mine out some magma blocks. And then for our copper, we need to wax it with some honeycomb. Of course, I'm not talking about the oxidized stuff, but down here, where I AFK for this farm, we of course have a bee farm with some honeycomb. I also needed a few extra stacks of a cha cha wood, so I thought I would just enjoy the Hermitcraft world, fly out to a location, and chop down some trees on site. Then there is the tricky old business of turtle eggs, which involved luring some turtles into a pen, waiting for them to breed, and stealing their eggs. And so, with all of these resources gathered, it is now time to head into the Nether Dimension. And this reminds me that I have expanded our Nether Tunnel. Am I facing the right direction? Yes, look at this. We've got a split in the road. So, this is our traditional tunnel. I really like this build palette and decided just to continue it on the other side here. It splits off into two locations. This goes over to the ice farm and the other way goes down this slope and ends up connecting to this nether tunnel here. So now I can get to my portals from two of the different nether tunnels of the nether hub. Speaking of which, the way we get to the roof of the nether is through here. Yes, there's even a sign. As you might have suspected, like many things, like this over here, farms get built on the roof of the nether and that's what we're going to be doing today. And we are following these frog lamps because I decided that I was going to be building this farm near our other existing one on the roof of the nether. And the minecart unloader is broken. I actually have a fix for that. I must remember to come back and fix it. Anyways, somewhere up here we have an AFK platform. There it is. 
And when thinking about where to build our farm, I got it into my head that we would connect the platform of one farm to the other. So I decided to put this thing at the same height. And if we turn on our despawn sphere rendering, you can kind of see we're going to be building it off in the distance in the middle of this sphere. But this farm is different to our frog lamp farm. You see that one's built all the way down there. And the lower it's built in the world, the better the spawn rates are. So because of this, I need to change the location and push it down. And how far down we're going to go is based on how much clearing out of space we'd have to do down here if we needed to extend this perimeter. So at the moment, you can see it would be beneficial for me to come in here and remove some spawning spaces. But inside of the sphere, there isn't exactly a crazy amount. So we could potentially push the location lower down. And so long story short, the position of this farm shouldn't really be related to the frog lamp farm at all. That was just a hangover of a silly idea to connect them together. So now I'm basing this on where we can get away with like a minimal amount of work and a really good perimeter. So I'll have to come down here and clear some spawning spaces, but there isn't a crazy amount to be done. Well, okay then, I've got my schematic and my perimeter in place, and I'm giving you a deliberately obscured little preview of what's to come here. But yes, now my friends, we throw down our shulker boxes and we start some construction. First things first, the spawning platforms. Let's see if we can, like, fly into scaffolding. I always find it really difficult to fly into scaffolding and actually land. Aha! Now you can see the glory of our magma block spawning platforms. And there are 11 of them in total, and already we've got zombie pigment spawning around here. Now it may not have been the best decision to build this first, but they are passive, and they're actually the only mob in this biome that's going to spawn on this particular block. So we can have them here and build the rest of the farm around this. The very last thing I will be doing is adding the turtle eggs. They are going to lure the zombie pigment out of the platforms. And it's here in front of them that I need to construct a giant array of trapdoors. So all the way up to the top there, I'm just going to be going across like this. And then I'm going to have to figure out how to open them all, which will probably be a case of like going down, yeah, a layer at a time like this. For now, though, we're going to leave them all closed as they'll keep those zombified piglins inside. Yes, earlier I was saying zombie pigments, of course, they did get renamed. But now we get to talk about how this gold farm is going to work, because I, the player, am going to kill them, but we're not going to use their aggression to bring them to me. As mentioned, we're going to use turtle eggs. They're going to lure them off the platform, and then we're going to have to go all the way back up to the top. That is because we have our perimeter to consider. This is how we're getting faster spawn rates inside of the farm. And this will be where I kill the zombified piglins. So we've got to bring them up here. And this is where the two days of engineering this farm I mentioned earlier in the video took place. I was working with Cyber on some different designs. And so you can see me testing out some ideas here. We had our spawning platform, a way to lure them across, and the zombified piglins needed to get shuffled into a single place to elevate them up. And I really like this contraption because it uses signal strength adding and subtracting with some comparators and also the target block to power these pistons. So if I go ahead and start the contraption, you can see that these get pushed out one by one and then eventually they reset and do the same thing over again. The only problem here is that it's a little on the slow side. The way it works though is by slowly adding up the signal strength so you can see that it spreads downwards and goes into a repeater which passes it across to the target blocks. Later on it occurred to me that you could power these with a chain of observers so that the signal can move down really quick. I never built a clock for this but you can kind of just see the concept in action as I update the observers. So this would be an alternative method for shuffling the zombie piglins down to the bottom. Now once they're down into a single spot, we would need to elevate them, right? Let's go ahead and check out this elevator design. <laughs> Look at them go up. That is so very, very cool. And when they reach the top, explosion! <laughs> Gotta love it. Now this was Cybot's design, and it seemed to be really reliable, but it does make use of string and tripwires. And something about this just made me feel like the piglins might get stuck in the middle and then there's no way to continue the slime blocks being activated to elevate them up. I also got it into my head that it might be better for them to be elevated through a single column. So over here I made this mangled contraption that seems to work for a couple of bounces and then something goes wrong with the timing around here. So the more reliable way seemed to be this one where you push them over 
from side to side. It's like you saw before, but this time it's running off of redstone and it's not using string and tripwires. And when I say running off of redstone, I mean like a constant signal that travels all the way to the top regardless of where the piglins are. So we can have this thing continuously activated, moving any zombie piglins that end up at the bottom and bring them to the top of our farm. And this, this is the really cool contraption that Cybot designed to move the zombie piglins across. You can probably get an idea of what it does, as there's a lot of pistons there. But it is actually powered by this clock at the very top here, which sends a signal downwards, activating the elevator on the side here, and eventually reaching the bottom and activating this thing too. And this is the AFK spot, by the way, so you can see the piglins will be delivered directly in front of us. But now what we're going to do is activate this thing. Uh-huh, and the signal travels down to the bottom pretty quick. So let's have a look at what's going on over here. So I think the best way to see this thing is by standing at the back and imagining that you're a piglin getting like pushed by one of the pistons. It's basically going to whip you from the back here very quickly into the front and then the piglins will be sent upwards. I think we just had one inside of the contraption, right? Yep. Yeah. Look at that, there it goes. And I think it actually got like pinged out over the top of my head and fell down somewhere. And I find it very curious how these zombie piglins have sort of come to the corner here. They're not angry with me, are they? They're just pathfinding to that corner. But they will be angry with me soon because I have built the killing chamber. Yes, that slime block will push the piglins over this slab. They'll fall into this free wide space. We can hit them through the gap at the top collect the XP through the gap at the bottom, and eventually we'll have a minecart collection system going to some storage to pick up the items that land on the glass. So I've realized we're now ready to fire up the gold farm part of this. I just need to grab some turtle eggs. And as you'll see, I've got a whole bunch of powder snow buckets here. So big props are in order to Nembomb MC, an amazing content creator who's now a developer over at Mojang. We were having some serious trouble with using vines in this farm. The piglins, they kept climbing up and down them. And we also couldn't get the pathfinding with the turtle eggs to work quite right. So Nembom was kind enough to come onto our server and show us how it's done. Sometimes it is much easier to demonstrate than explain. Will we see them bob up and down on the vines? Ah yes, this one here is demonstrating the problem. The vines simply play an important role in resetting the full damage, which happens when the pigment goes through the vine block. And so with Powder Snow, we can essentially achieve the same thing. You can even see them slowing down a little bit as they pass through. So that was one of the problems, and the other was the placement of turtle eggs. We had a whole row of blocks and a whole bunch of turtle eggs on top of them, but it turns out that you only need one turtle egg every so often. So Nembom and his pathfinding knowledge showed us that we only need one turtle egg for I think every two or three floors here, and you can already see that it's working, look, they're all lined up and ready to go. So I think it makes sense that we turn this thing on up the top here, and then get ready to unleash the piglins. Maybe I should have opened all of the trapdoors first. Yeah, the moment I open this one, some of them can get into that space, and then I won't be able to be in there right-clicking to open the trapdoors. Wow. Maybe I just work from one side like this is this is going to be madness now. I know this just isn't going to work out very well. And if I'm not careful here, I might end up becoming victim to my own contraption. Okay, fortunately that is not the case. I have stepped out at just the right time and you're the first one to go through this thing. Off he goes. So back up to the top to try it again. And I can't pop onto these platforms to interact with the trapdoors because I've got to hold down shift. Otherwise I take damage. You know, I'm starting to think I should have done the trapdoors before putting in the eggs, right? Okay, alternative idea. I could just be on the outside with some scaffolding, right-clicking like so. <laughs> Definitely should have done this the other way around. Okay, that took longer than it ever should have done, but we've opened every single trapdoor. Right now, what we need is our sweeping edge and looting sword. It is time to get some gold. Oh, and they are very angry now and they make a lot of noise, goodness me. Do you know what else they do? They drop a lot of items. So now we need a way to pick up those items and sort them. 
And this is why we have a lot of space up the top here on this platform because we're going to be filling it in with all sorts of contraptions. There's some redstone to turn on this system over here and then it goes on and it turns on some other systems for bartering and all of that stuff. Let's go ahead and see if this actually works. Did I build it correctly? It looked like I did because the minecart hopper has come down here and then when it goes back up top it should get destroyed. And yeah, look at that, comes back out again. We have, of course, seen this system a few times here on Hermitcraft this season. However, this one is like slightly modified in a few places to make it more reliable in the never. And also you'll see we've got these amethyst crystals here which we're using to align the items. So when some come through, they'll actually get dumped down the bottom here and then pushed across this ice. We've got item filters here for golden nuggets. And then at the end, we're gonna filter out the golden ingots. And everything else gets destroyed by the fire. But yes, the ingots, they are automatically gonna go into our bartering system, which is going to be placed over here. We'll have another storage system on the other side. But now though, we've got some temporary storage for gold ingots. So I'm gonna go ahead, fire up the farm, and see what we can get. So the use of my auto clicker and free cam here is just brilliant for getting a good shot of what's going on. So down the bottom here, we can see the piglins being attracted to the turtle eggs, falling into the contraption at the bottom, which is quite honestly my favorite bit. Look at this, they absolutely get zipped along by those pistons. Then up the top here, we've got a lot of items on the ground. They get scooped up by this minecart hopper. And then just up the top here, we can see them yeah, drop down onto there. There are indeed some issues here I'm not sure how to solve. But for the most part, the goodies are going to get picked up by the hoppers and the stuff that we don't want is going to get destroyed in the fire. So having used this farm for the last 15 minutes, I can tell you there's going to be a few improvements and tweaks that we need to make. But for the most part, it's utterly fantastic and super fast. I got all of these gold blocks. And that was from the nuggets that get filtered into these chests. As for the gold that'll go straight on through to the bartering system, we don't get quite as much as I would have liked, but that's what I got over 15 minutes, which isn't too bad. And originally I thought with a looting sword, the ingots that you get from the pigmen might be fast enough for a bartering system for them to go directly through. But it turns out that might not be so, so we're gonna have to modify our contraption a little bit, which we'll be doing in the next episode. There is more to do up here, but this thing so far has been utterly fantastic. I hope you have enjoyed its creation and you'll come back next episode to see what we do with this thing next. Oh yeah, and there's there's a lot of pigmen waiting to be sent up. Let's just go ahead and see that in action one last time. If you've enjoyed today's episode, be sure to leave a like. Thank you as always for the support, and I'll see you soon with another episode of Hermitcraft. Bye-bye.